Good morning, dreamers. Happy Thursday. So I just got to move this back a little bit. If I were a professional, that would have all been done before I got started. I'm so glad you're here at my kitchen table again today. It's Monday, Monday, Thursday. It's not Monday. But anyway, it's the day, the Thursday of Holy Week, where we chat about or we remember when Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover and it's the upper room last supper scene, right? That everyone sees in religious, Christian religious settings. Last supper. I read a tweet yesterday and it was, I often joke about what I would do if I had 24 hours to live and what would I do? And then it hit him. Jesus knew and he washed feet. He didn't go skydiving. He didn't go spending his credit card so that somebody else had to pay it off. He, he washed his disciples' feet. Mm. I want to be like Jesus when I grow up. With 24 hours left, I want to serve. Show people as much kingdom love as possible. But it was interesting because that came at the same time. Like when God talks to me, he repeats himself over and over and over. <laughs> and I was talking with a friend at a church prayer meeting yesterday. And he's, he's an older than me friend. And he has grandchildren and a, a few greats. And um, we were talking about racial reconciliation within the church. That's where it started. And he said that, he struggles because growing up, it was a totally different culture and how it takes ages for a culture to change. And the church is just that much slower. And how his parents would whip off sentences that were awful sentences. They were wrong then, but nobody called them on it. That's what he was saying. Nobody called us on this stuff, nobody. So it became how we spoke. And we naturally weren't even equating this with dehuman, dehumanizing people. It was the culture. And, it's, it's, and he was not excusing it. He was saying, nobody called us on it. Nobody. And I was thinking how very real and needed that statement was. Past cultures are not an excuse. Past habits are not an excuse. But they help us understand that there are some very godly people who just take a little extra time. 60 years doesn't turn over the same way 20, 13 years, right? 30 would do. And so we call each other on it. But we're also patient and kind and gentle. It's when someone is knowingly horrific and we, we dig out and we root up what needs to get rid of. And, and that's what brings me to this on Thursday. So Judas betrays Jesus right after the Last Supper, right? Judas is sitting here, his whole culture, his whole religious upbringing was that the Messiah would come and turn over Rome and he'd be a man of might and he would just become this geopolitical power here on earth. But Jesus came a different way. He came gently. He flipped over tables in love. Yes, there were some actual tables that needed to get flipped. And that's the calling on, hey, you can't speak that way anymore. That's not okay. And the true godly heart senses that that information is correct and wants to do better and wants to grow and wants to learn and wants to change, even, even in an older than me state. <laughs> Relearning, uprooting, gardening, and ripping up weeds. But here's Judas saying, come on, Jesus, if I just push this betrayal thing, you will have no choice but to flip over Rome. 
I don't think Judas actually hated Jesus. I think he loved him so much. He was so um, sure that Jesus was the Messiah that he knew if he just pushed this a little bit more, Jesus would have no choice but to show up and stand up and draw the sword. Little did he know Jesus is not that kind of warrior. And sometimes in our faith and in our understanding that this is how I was raised and this is what I'm expecting and this is what is happening, we start to butt heads with people that do things a little differently than we do. And there are tables that need to be flipped and Jesus flipped those. In other words, like my friend said, there's things that need to be called. Absolutely. And he expressed grief and mourning for before I was woken to this, before I came to understand how damaging this is, what did I pass on to the next generation? And I said, you know what? <laughs> God is so much bigger than our mistakes. We have to be willing and open and let him flip the tables within us and let him come in in love and in peace and show us the way. So yes, what is God calling you to? What is he saying? I'm calling you on this behavior. It's not okay. How you treat that creation of mine, not okay. I'm calling you on that. And then what is our response? Is it one of peace and of love and of yes, I will sit down hum humbly change how I speak and how I live and how I act towards others? Will I look again? Jesus called his disciples to look again at what they thought was truth, what they thought was going to happen. And Judas got it so messed up and he rushed the kingdom. And he felt so bad. He felt there was no redemption because ultimately what he thought would be bringing and ushering in the kingdom was a betrayal of God himself. God's bigger than your failures, friend. He wants you to dream. He wants you to see with his eyes. And he wants you to love your fellow man and show them the kingdom here on earth as it is on heaven, not just in, in, in heaven, not just a kingdom on earth, but as it is in heaven. Again, I'm sorry it's so deep, but these are the things that fly through my head in my, what is supposed to be sleeping hours. <laughs> so today choose. I'm going to follow Jesus, even if it looks different than what I thought it should look. Even if my theology is a little off, I'm going to be willing to let that theology shift and change because Jesus always said, love your neighbor. He didn't say love your theology. Dream on that one today. Anyway, I am so honored to have family and friends that even if they're in an older than me state, they are willing to learn and grow and, and still coach me as to what it is to have a humble heart. And I hope and pray that when I'm an older than me state, my children will be patient with me as I'm relearning and understanding things that right now I don't see as a problem, but they might be. I need to really open up my soul and say, God, go digging. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Happy Thursday. A lot to think about today. This one's my longest one yet, so I'm going to shut up. You get the gist. Sweet dreams.